happy Friday morning uh, to those of the U.S. Happy uh, Friday afternoon in the U.K. Happy Friday evening for those of you uh, in the Pacific Rim. It's great to be with you all. This is Tyler Yell, uh, and we're going to be touching on a subject that's near and dear to my heart, uh, something that I use in my trading for uh, price projections, uh, for setting stops, for setting entries, and, and can encompass a lot uh, that I think every trader can use, and, and that is pivot points. Um, also going to be using about a we're going to be talking about a few modifications um, and, and how I use pivot points not only for day trading uh, but also uh, an additional way to measure volatility uh, that can help you time entries as well uh, so I do want to start with a quick risk disclaimer uh, as we get underway the session is going to be about uh, 40 minutes and, and try and have some time for questions as well uh, I appreciate everybody that's in attendance today, and I want you to feel that you're always welcome to reach out to me um, or you know, ask absolutely ask questions in real time. Uh, so uh, the next is the risk disclaimer. Just stating the trading foreign exchange on margin carries a high level of risk and may not be suitable for all investors. A high degree of leverage can work against you as well as for you. Uh, and then lastly, um, for the compliance checklist, we have the hypothetical performance disclaimer stating that past performance is not indicative of future results. Um, the beauty of pivots, I believe, is that they can be used in either market environment that you're facing, whether it's trending or a ranging environment. And, and because of that, uh, we're going to be looking most recently, thanks to the U.S. dollar in large part and uh, some of the commodity currency weakness, but we're going to be looking at uh, some strong trends um, and how those have led to some great trades. Um, but again, I must state past performance, not indicative of future results. If you guys would like to uh, follow me on Twitter or reach out to me via email, you're more than welcome and encouraged to do so. You have my contact information there. I am a trading instructor and analyst with Daily FX, um, and it is a pleasure, an absolute pleasure to be here with, uh, with FX Street today. So on with the show. Uh, and again, thank you for everybody that's, that's coming in now, and do feel free to ask questions in real time. Uh, why pivot points? Why, why was this a subject that I wanted to address? Well, I feel that any trader can really benefit from pivot points. Uh, new, experienced uh, prop traders use it. Uh, new traders can use it. Um, and, and we'll talk about the value of pivot points as well as different ways that you can use it. Because in the end, though I may hand you a knife to cook, most of you are going to likely make something different based on based on your appetite and based on your preferences. And I think pivot points and, and most indicators are, are similar. Um, however, I think pivot points are, are a little bit more malleable, if you will, of an indicator. And what I mean by that is that you can suit them to work well with your personality, whether you are a day trader, whether you are a swing trader, that's, that's the camp that I fall in, um, or, or you are what I like to call a trade vester, somebody who is going to sit on a trade based on maybe monetary policy divergence um, like Euro USD or, or a major macro event like uh, Sterling, uh, something of that nature. So I think this can be used in, in many ways, uh, and we're going to talk about that. Uh, I believe pivot points are excellent because they are objective. That's something that you will hear me say throughout today's session. The objectivity is rare, I think, in trading, uh, and pivot points give you that objectivity. Uh, for support, resistance, um, price targets, entry points, exit points. Uh, because of that, because of that objectivity, uh, I think it's a very, very helpful tool to use. Um, in addition to that, I believe it can be used in trends. A lot of people are in the buy low, sell high mentality of all the time. Uh, and that can work very well in ranges. Um, and, and that can work very well if used in moderation. Uh, with with trends, uh, specifically uptrends, as you can imagine. Um, I like to think of it more as buy the dip, sell the rip. Um, and what I mean by that is when you have a defined uptrend, we are buying the dip. And, and pivot points identify two key levels of dips, which we're going to talk about as the pivot and the first level of support within a weekly pivot today. Or in a downtrend, we like to sell the rip, which again, we will identify as the pivot or the resistance one level. Um, and so those are things we're going to talk about when trading pivots in the direction of the trend. Ranges, that's to me the, the ideal buy low, sell high. Dollar yen uh, for a majority of the summer. It's definitely not the case right now. An incredible run up. Um, but 
dollar yen over the summer and late sp or early spring, uh, we had a, a very well defined range. There you could buy loan and sell high. And then as we'll talk about as well, it pivots team up very well with other indicators. Uh, dollar CAD is a recent example. Teamed up nicely with a moving average and we'll use that example as well. Uh, and again, if you have questions, uh, we, can, we can discuss those as well as to what other indicators you can use them on. All right, so this is kind of how I like to think of pivots. And that is that pivots help you take a bite of the market. Uh, trading is one of the most unique aspects and one of the most unique things that I think a lot of people will come into contact with in their entire life. Uh, if you have read Mark Douglas's Trading in the Zone, a book that if you have not read, I, I highly recommend it uh, just because it's a paradigm shifter for a lot of, a lot of traders and, and can really change your view on, on, on your place in an ever-moving market. But I think this, I think this phrase um, and, and I think this, this mental image of taking the bite of the market, taking a bite out of the market, applies incredibly well to pivots. And the reason why I say that is because really – uh, and you're going to see me flip back and forth through a few charts here. When you look at things like dollar CAD, we understand that we're not going to buy the exact bottom. You know, and we understand that we're not likely going to sell at the exact top. So really what we're doing is we're, tr we're trying to find the meat of the move, right? Or at least a, a low-hanging fruit of the move, if you will, Wh whatever that may be. Um, and, and I'll explain some of these points here in just a moment, but as you can see on my charts, uh, these pivot points identify either entries or exits, and, and we'll talk about that in just a moment. You can see when we cross below the weekly pivot on Aussie dollar, that prompted a, a short sell. Now, there's other forms of analysis that went along with it, but pivots did a very good job of saying, okay, we're getting a shift at a pretty important level, which we can talk about in, in a moment as well. Go back here. Okay, so uh, again, the idea here, and I think it's a very helpful, a very helpful thought. Uh, I'm going to use about an 80, 80 plus year old quote um, out of Reminiscences of a Stock Operator, uh, written by Edward Lefevre. If, if you haven't read it, Light Trading in the Zone, highly recommend it. I think you can get both of those books on audiobooks if, if you don't have time to read, or if you're if you're a family, a uh, family man or woman like myself. Um, very, very valid. But one of the one of the quotes from uh, reminiscences of a stock operator is it said that every every trader, every investor, or speculator, I think is the word specifically used there, should forget about the first eighth and the last eighth of a move. Uh, they go on to say that's often the most expensive eighth. You know, that's before they actually used decimals. They used fractional pricing back in the day. But they said the first eighth, trying to buy the first eighth and trying to sell the last eighth of a move, it was often the most expensive mistake a trader could make. Well, naturally, the, the inverse of trying to catch the top or the bottom is to just focus on the meat of the move. And, and I think pivots do an incredible job uh, of helping you do that. So why trade with pivots? Again, it, it, is, it is objective. Um, it, it is something that is going to be, I think, very black and white, which is very helpful for traders, having that objectivity of, okay, here's a level of support. Here's another level of support. Should these level breaks should these levels break, excuse me, I, I need to change my view. Effectively, what it's doing is it's, it's giving you a roadmap, and that's incredibly helpful because what, what trading with the zone allows uh, open, open my mind up to, if you will, uh, is that there is no defined endpoint, right? Almost everything we do, whether it's med school, um, wh whether it's college, whether it's a job project, whether it's uh, raising a family, whether it's a road trip, we have a defined end in mind, and markets do not effectively have that, right? One, one quote that I, I love from Mark Douglas is that every moment in the market is unique, right? There, there has never been a, a environment in the market that is perfectly replicated because there are always new traders. There are always new buyers with, with, with price projections. There are new, new sellers with points at which they think it could drop. While patterns could replicate over time, and as you can imagine, I am a big fan of technical analysis, so I do buy into technical analysis, but while patterns repeat over time, they are comprised of different people, uh, and because of that, we don't have a, a, a firm destination, and so I think in terms of where the market is going, we'll never know 100% for sure, 
what the close will be tomorrow. But I think pivot points provide an invaluable roadmap for every trader to use. Uh, as, you, as you'll be able to see here, I'm going to go back to that dollar CAD chart. Um, really, commodity crosses across the board, dollar CAD, Kiwi dollar, uh, an example we'll, we'll talk about here in just a moment. Aussie dollar have weakened significantly against the U.S. dollar. Um, and, and with that, one thing that we've seen is that price targets have continued to get hit in the direction of the trend. So in an echo of the roadmap for traders, uh, it also gives you mile markers, places to take a break, so to speak, book some profits in a trend, and, and we'll, take, we'll take a look at how that's, how that's worked out with some of those clear setups. Dollar yen's another good example. Uh, what's nice about pivots and, and some of the next slides we'll get into uh, is that it uses price pa past price extremes. And that's very, very helpful because a mistake as an instructor with Daily FX that I, that I run into a lot of new traders making is, is they will grasp risk reward, which is great. And, and you absolutely should grasp the value of having a good risk reward or a favorable uh, outcome with every trade or series of trades, but they will often use objective, uh, uh, subjective points. Excuse me. And, and what I mean by that is they'll say, you know what? I'll set up a, I'll set up a hundred pip limit and a fifty pip stop. However, if you're sitting in a market that has an ATR, which stands for average true range or, or common amount of distance traveled over any given day, of let's say thirty pips, well, then going for hundred pips may not be realistic. Right? It, it, it's often better to actually use the market to project the market, if you will, because there is often going to be a breakout in relation to prior moves, meaning that's what the, that's what the extreme will be. Um, and that's why we use Fibonacci ratios and things of that nature in that you're, you're using past price to look at potential sticking points of future price. Uh, and, and so that's what pivots do. We'll talk about the calculation of pivots in just a moment, but the fact that it uses specific prices, i.e. the high, the low, and the close of a specific period, I, I think is very, very helpful. Uh, you can see here, it, it does give you provide precise entries. We'll talk about those as well. Uh, and then it does prevent you from entering on an extension. This is another thing, and, and, and you can tell there's a lot of important things about pivots to me that I think is so helpful. Uh, I, I'm part of a service at Daily Effects On Demand, or sorry, at Daily Effects called Daily Effects On Demand, uh, and it's a live trading room, um, and, and it's something that we do to help traders see, okay, where are we entering, what are, what are banks looking at, um, and, and just bring in some kind of level two research, if you will. Um, so some really some really top level views, but we also get to hear. Okay, I'm looking at trading this. Uh, so so an audience will, or an audience member will say, I'm, I'm looking at trading this. What are your thoughts? And and often you'll notice time and time again they get most excited when a trend has extended themselves. I.e., I, they'll they'll be looking to enter on a break of 110, or, or they'll be looking to enter in on an extension because the idea is I don't want to miss out on this move, right? I want to I want to be a part of of this move, and, and again, I would just I would just state that by by not having pivots, it's very easy to get in on an extension, and we'll, we'll explain this in just a moment. And, and as you'll see, I define an extension as anything above the weekly R2 in an uptrend, or anything below the weekly S2 in a downtrend. And it doesn't mean the market can't move higher in an uptrend or lower in a downtrend. But when you've entered on an extension, you've put yourself in a, in a rather precarious position as somebody who's risking their own capital. And, and that is that, quite simply, other profit takers, traders who have been in for the quote-unquote long haul, like you can see here on this dollar yen, we had this breakout here, a little bit of a correction, and then we started to break higher um, above the pivot, which was, which was a helpful sign for me. Um, and and we'll, again, I'll explain this entry in just a moment, but just giving you guys the, the big idea here, when you get those breaks above the R2, it's effectively an extended market. And, and I think in and of itself, it can tell you that we need something objective like an R2 to say, okay, listen, emotionally you're excited because the market's above the R2. That, that, that makes sense. But from a capital risk standpoint, 
it's very dangerous. Yes, it can continue to break out and continue to move higher, but net-net, it's a poor process with a poor outlook if we are entering in on extensions uh, because your risk-reward becomes skewed. Any type of profit-taking, even a simple dip, uh, could leave you overexposed. So the next question I want to present is, okay, so who, who uses pivots anyway, and, and how are pivots used? Well, they were originally used by floor traders. Um, and and while, while there was a lot of, <laughs> while there was a lot of manic-like attitude in, in pivot use, I think it's helpful to know that pivots were used by these traders because it would allow them to remain objective while people around them were going nuts. Right. I mean, the, again, the calculation, which we'll look at in just a moment, is very, very simple. And, and by using these levels, like the weekly pivots, and, and again, there are daily pivots and there are monthly pivots. The example I like to use, at least in teaching the lesson, uh, is, is weekly pivots, and then you can use it to your own preference. Uh, but the reason why a lot of floor traders use these pivots was to keep their head cool as those around them were, were losing theirs effectively. Um, as a trader, I use pivots. I, I talk to, to a, a lot of experienced traders who say that, you know what, pivots just kind of gives a quick barometer check as to how, how price currently is to past extremes. Um, and so I talk to traders every week um, that, that at least use pivots to, to get a grasp. Uh, one of my colleagues, Walker England, um, with Daily FX, uses something that we're going to talk about today called Camarilla pivots to, to day trade and, and catch some intraday reversal points. Um, so all, all that to say, it's, it's a widely used tool and definitely worth getting to know. Uh, so one chart that you've actually already seen and I want to show you and we'll discuss given the current market environment is Kiwi dollar. Uh, a very, very strong trend, but what you're going to see us discuss is that pivots have their place in trend trading. Right, because a lot of traders, if you remember the concept of taking a bite out of the market, a lot of traders like to, at one time or at, at, at one hand, trade with a trend. But at the, on the other hand, they don't necessarily want to just leave open risk. Right, They don't want to just have a, a trade without a limit on there. They want to know, okay, if we hit this point, I, I should get out. Right, Maybe the trend will continue, but at the very least, I'm going to take some money off the table. Um, and as you can see here, this is just an example with Kiwi Dollar. Uh, this is just a screen grab I took today. But you can see since we broke below it, that 8750 zone, which was effectively the pivot back up here. And I'll, I'll go ahead and bring up that, that Kiwi Dollar chart uh, so you can see it on a larger screen. Since we broke below, and, and another thing that I like to do uh, in using pivots is, is, is understanding that in an uptrend, the S2 – and often the S1 is likely never used. So when the S2 is hit first, it's often an idea or a signal that the trend is shifting. All right? Let me go over to cable, a similar scenario. I'm going to go and what I like to do just to, just to show you, I will often just have this week's pivots. Uh, but in teaching about pivots, I often like to bring up past pivots, which I'm using MarketScope 2.0. It's FXCM's charting package. Uh, I trade with FXCM. I'm a trading instructor with daily FX. Uh, but, but pivots are, a, are, are often going to be an absolute free indicator on anything you use. Now, you're going to notice if you've added just classic pivots onto your, onto your charting package, uh, you likely don't have these lines here. I'll explain those lines later. And if you trade with FXCM, I'll be more than happy to send you the file to download it for free. Uh, but what you can see here is a strong trend higher, which, which you don't need pivots to see that. But again, what I think is helpful is the fact that the first time we hit the S2, which is the second level of support in a pivot, there's been a shift. And that S2, more often than not, will indicate that a strong enough reversal or momentum shift has taken place that if you're in a long-term buy trade, might be time to get out or take some money off the table or pull your stops higher. Um, if you've been looking for a reversal, the S2 is one of those first things you'll see in a strong trend. Uh, one of the first things hit that lets you know their volatility is about to increase or a reversal is underway. And, and you can see here, these are two completely different currency pairs. This one's cable. Uh, and you can see here, after it hit the S2, 
it really spent relatively little time since late July, even above the weekly pivot. So the black line here, and you can see it looks like a staircase, is the weekly pivot. Obviously, this is that gap we had to open up last or this week uh, after that Scottish referendum poll. And this open here I have as resistance because that's, that's where that gap is now on the daily chart. Uh, but the idea here, uh, and, and what I'd like to communicate, is that in a trend, downtrend or uptrend, uh, let me give you an example in an uptrend, it, it can work It can work very, very well, right? So dollar Swiss is in an uptrend, dollar CAD is in an uptrend, uh, and, and it's the same argument. You can buy the dip, uh, a phrase we used a little bit earlier, and, and, and you can get out at some of these clean targets. So let me bring up that dollar CAD chart once again. Right, this can, this can be just a, a helpful way to get out on, on strength. Go ahead and pull up historical pivots on dollar Swiss. Now this effectively is the inverse of Euro USD, um, but you can see here, again, R2 gets hit. Sometimes it's just the R1. Uh, R2 got gapped through here effectively on that ECB announcement uh, and, and thoughts of a, of a future SNB intervention. Uh, but all, all that to say, it can be a very, very simple and effective tool in uptrend or downtrending markets. Now, if you guys are interested, these are the calculations. Uh, I think a lot of indicators and pivots are no different. It's a lot like electricity in the sense that most people just want to know that it works and then they'll use it as opposed to understanding how it works. Um, but these are the major calculations, the formulas for the pivot points. The pivot point calculation, high plus low plus close divided by three. Um, and, and so if you're using a weekly pivot, it's taking the last week's high plus low plus close divided by three. Uh, daily pivots, yesterday's high, low, close, added up, divided by three. Monthly pivot, last month's high, low, close, divided by three. Um, that's going to be your barometer. Naturally, you're trading above the pivot. Uh, it's, it's, it's often best to, to favor a, a, a near-term continuation. And, and you, as you'll notice in a lot of my charts, or when I talk about historical pivots, that's why I like to use kind of this example of a staircase higher, a weak correction, staircase higher, sideways correction, staircase higher. Uh, and so that's going to be my bias. And again, I'll look to an S2 to get hit before I really change my mind on that overall uptrend. All right, so we looked at the calculation of pivots. Uh, as far as candlesticks, I think candlesticks play a very, very key role in using pivots correctly. And, and the reason why is because there's effectively two things I'm looking for. Uh, a large body uh, is, is something that I look for to establish the overall trend, uh, especially if you get a move like on dollar yen, and, and I appreciate you guys letting me go back and forth between these charts. When you get a, a large move through these pivots, right, and you'll often in a strong trend, you'll see a, a strong move through the R1. If you see a large body through the R1 in an uptrend or a large red body through the S1 in a downtrend, you'll often have little trouble hitting the second level, whether that's support or resistance. Uh, if you get a large candle wick around those levels, and, and that can really either be the S1 in an in a uptrend or the pivot in an uptrend, or the R1 if you get a candle wick against the R1 or a candle wick against the pivot, that can be a, a clean signal with rather limited risk because, again, we're always about risk-reward. In the end, that's, that's kind of all we have in the uncertainties of the market uh, is, a, is a favorable outcome based on risk-reward. So when you get a candle wick against one of those key levels, right, that shows you an entry or reversal opportunity. The large body is, to me, more of a confirmation candle. So this is a little checklist that I, I just drew up, and I, and I hope this is helpful for you. The whole purpose of this is, is that it, it's helpful to ask a few questions before any type of trading. Uh, I, I probably have a list of about five to ten questions on any given trade that I'll ask. Uh, now, it, it ranges from fundamental news that's coming out, um, sentiment, 
uh, different types of technical analysis, whether it be Elliott wave, Ichimoku pivots, things of that nature. Uh, but these are these are some of those questions that I'm often asking, especially when using pivots. Uh, the first is to is there a direction of the pivots, right? Is there a staircase higher? Is there a staircase lower? If so, that's going to go ahead and tell me there's a pretty clean trend on our hands. Second, I'm going to ask, okay, well, if there is a clear trend, is there a low risk opportunity. Now, when I say low risk, what I'm effectively referring to there is in an uptrend, are we sitting near the pivot or the S1? Because going back to dollar CAD, and you can see here we had this correction for you Elliott waivers. Uh, I had that as an S or as a fourth wave. Right? But but the idea here is that okay, we have this nice push up from the beginning of July, nice little correction, and then another push higher, right? Effectively, what I'm looking for is those, those, those dips in an overall uptrend to enter on. The reason why is because I can be a little bit more comfortable. My stop, for what it's worth, was, again, it was an Elliott Wave-based stop, but just to show you, it was at this peak when I entered into the trend. So looking at this as a dip, I had my stop below here and it ended up working out. They don't always do that, but it's just an example of I'm looking to buy dips in an uptrend and pivots give you an objective way to do that. You can see here we had this nice bullish reversal candle off of this S2. We had a little bit of follow through, another corrective move, right? So that shows us a, a flat correction effectively before breaking through 110. So identify whether it's a range or if there's direction of pivots that shows us a trend, uh, and then identify if there is a low risk entry on the chart. And, and again, in an uptrend, a dip is effectively going to be the S1. In the strongest of uptrends, I, I think dollar yen is a good example here. Sometimes the pivot is about as good as it gets. Uh, and, and what I mean by that is that, and, and that's actually this pivot range here, which, which again I'll explain in, in, in a little bit. Um, we've got about 20 minutes left in the session, uh, is, is that in the strongest of trends, if you're looking for a, a move below the pivot or to the S1, you'll likely be disappointed, right? Because as news comes out and uh, expectations of a market adjust, quite simply, people get afraid of missing out. Institutions all pile in together. Whatever the reason may be, we might only get to the pivot and not to the S1. So it's important to look at both of those and, and really the price action off of them. So if you remember that, that candlestick chart we were looking at a little bit earlier, that, that example we were talking about a little bit earlier, I, I know it's kind of trading 101, but what we want to find is, okay, do we get a reversal off one of those support levels in an uptrend or off one of those resistance levels in a downtrend? And then you, you get a nice confirmation bar, a nice wide body candle on the chart of your preference. Okay, another, another key question to ask there again, uh, where should your stop be? So if you entered in on the S1, so you're trading in an uptrend, and you enter in on the S1 as an example, then the S2 can be a very clean stop. Below the S2, remember, the, the reason why is because if the S2 is hit, then, then likely the move has reversed. Um, let's go and take a look at Euro USD. Very good question here. Appreciate the question. Uh, so the question is, can, can we talk about a Euro USD pullback? Absolutely, absolutely. In, in no uncertain terms, 138 or 130, excuse me, 130 has my attention. 130 is the weekly pivot. Um, in addition to that, again, just to just to give you a, a few different tools here. And as you heard me say earlier, pivot points can be combined well with other tools. It's just a clean corrective channel, if nothing else, I think could bring us up to this pivot zone, also known as a pivot range, around 133, going into February 18th's FOMC. So that's going to be next week's Fed meeting, the same day as the Scottish referendum, likely going to be a lot of, uh, a, a, a lot of volatility next week. And quite simply... 
any move into 131, uh, I'd, I'd probably enter into a new short position with a stop around, uh, around the R2 looking for a move to the downtrend. Um, a lot of the banks, um, you know, the, so the tier one investment banks, I have access to a lot of their research thanks to Daily Effects on Demand. They're, they're effectively looking lower and lower. Um, Goldman Sachs, for example, they, they changed their year-end target uh, from 125 down to down to 110, uh, and it's just this divergence of monetary policy. City yesterday was talking about parity and why why they think we'll hit parity on Euro USD. The argument from banks remains the same. Um, Euro dollar is an opportunity that if we get a rip, if we get any type of correction, they will be selling that correction. Uh, could we get a reversal? We absolutely could, but that's why again I think pivots are a great opportunity because. If I do get in around 130, I'll likely have my stop around the R1. If I get in around 131, so depending on what happens around here, I'll be looking at the price action intently to see if that's viable. Uh, then, then I can have my stop above the R2, or maybe just above this swing high around 131.60. Uh, the trend has been sharp, but if you think about what we're correcting and what lies ahead, i.e. a Fed that could be raising the rates, um, a, a eurozone that continues to be disarray uh, with weakening inflation numbers, then, then many expect this trend to continue. Net net, I think this R2 adds very good resistance because we had a gap there um, that often acts as strong resistance in an uptrend. It's a good question. Um, but as of now, 130 is the resistance that I'd be looking at. All right, so I hope I hope this checklist hap, uh, helps. Uh, again, always always want to look at uh, what the trade size will be. That's always an important question. Uh, in, in terms of adding other indicators, right? Uh, I, I I think pivots can enhance other indicators, whether it's RSI, uh, moving averages. I think I talked about dollar CAD a little bit earlier. All right, so the fifty. This is a fifty-five day moving average. So it's a four-hour chart, but the calculation is a 55-day moving average. And, and, and the 55-day moving average, has just it's worked great for dollar cat. Um, and, and, and with that, uh, you can see here it, it gave a clean opportunity to buy a dip in the overall uptrend and then use pivots and those types of tools to confirm the overall trend. Uh, other things you can use, if you're a fan of Ichimoku, I know Ichimoku is uh, a bit of a – specialized indicator, if you will. Uh, we recently got a, a very sharp Ichimoku reversal signal on Aussie dollar. Uh, and what you can see here is we broke below the cloud, tested the cloud as resistance, and then broke down sharply. Um, and so all that to say, the next level I'll be looking at, and there's a few different things in play here. So on Euro USD, I talked about seeing resistance at 130 and that being really my focus in, as far as a near-term correction um, and, and using this channel to kind of show you how that could play out. With Aussie dollar, this 3, 5, and B could easily be a left shoulder, head, right shoulder, and, and the target for this head and shoulders actually takes us right down to this zone here, this 1618 extension. So just a, just a few things that are that are in play that kind of help add to add to the conviction here. Now remember I talked about entering on an extension. That means that quite simply I'm not uh, sorry. They are weekly pivots. Uh, trader said are, are these daily or weekly pivots? The concept works across the board. I'm more of a swing trader. I prefer as far as the classic pivots. Uh, I prefer using the weekly pivots. We're going to talk about Camarilla pivots shortly, and, and that's my preferred daily pivot. Um, but which you can see here, going back to the four hour, we are well below the S2. In fact, we might even be on the verge of an S3. I usually don't show S2 and S3 because 90% of the time they're not even at play. You can see we came below the S3 on Aussie dollar. Um, so all that to say, any type of reversal next week, I'll be looking at next week's pivot um, as resistance to possibly add into this trade on. So that, that was just a quick example of, of Ichimoku, Fibonacci, moving averages um, uh, being added to, to kind of boost your use of pivots. This is an example. It's an older chart, uh, but it just shows how uh, dips in RSI correspond with 
pivot support that made for a nice entry higher. All right, so uh, to some of you asking about uh, daily pivots, and, and this, will, this will bring us into the end of uh, the session, uh, but that is these are a few different strategies that you can use in, in terms of using pivots. Uh, for day traders, I think Camarilla pivots can be incredibly helpful. Uh, and I'll explain, I'll explain Camarilla pivots, excuse me, um, after this slide. Uh, but as far as trading these pivots, if you want to use classic pivots, if, if Camarilla isn't, uh, isn't of preference for you, um, then I still think even on the daily, um, you can use an hourly chart or a 30-minute chart or 15-minute chart um, to effectively buy the dip, S1, uh, sell the rip, R1. Um, I, I give a little bit more leniency in daily pivots. So if you remember, I talked about looking at weekly pivots. If the weekly S2 is hit, a downtrend is either confirmed or an uptrend is reversing. Um, I don't have that same view with daily pivots uh, because naturally the shorter the time period, the more noise you're going to get. Um, I am a fan of opening range breakouts. It's something I've talked about here at FX Street and something that uh, I think could be a, also a helpful objective tool in, in effect using either opening range breakouts for the session, uh, for the week, uh, to help you get a bias, an objective bias into, into your trade. Uh, and then again, Camarillas, which we'll discuss next, can be very helpful as well. Uh, swing traders, which is really what a majority of this session has been, you know, kind of geared toward, um, but is, 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 I think, weekly pivots just complement swing trading so well, right? Because you can easily combine pivots with current strategies to either fade corrections of the trend, um, meaning that, again, in an uptrend, a, a correction is going to be a, just a, a small dip that you can buy into. Pivots give you a very objective level to do that. Uh, in a downtrend, um, a small correction could be a, a rip into a pivot, weekly pivot, or possibly an R1 uh, before a move to the downside. Um, as, as far as long-term, well, I call them trade vesters, uh, but you can use an opening range breakout combined with monthly pivots. Um, and, and you can trail your stop with something like that. Now, uh, the opening range breakout, while it's nothing we have time to go into today here, the macro opening range breakout, as discussed by Mark Fisher in his book, The Logical Trader, uses the first two weeks of January uh, and, and then the first two weeks of July. And as you can imagine, looking at the dollar index, which uh, a friend of the program asked us to take a look at, and we absolutely can, Uh, dollar index has been on an absolute tear. You can see if I go to the historical pivots how clean the staircase has been. And, and as you'll notice, we put a bottom in the first day of July. Um, all that to say, that's the first day of the second half of the year. Um, I tell you that to tell you this. Uh, we had a very clean opening range breakout for the second half of 2014, and that continues to be honored. Right, so, the, so taking the first two weeks of price action, uh, we've continued to push higher, and, and you can see here we've had very, very few moves below the pivot. So the question I got a little bit earlier was, could you project a dollar index pullback? Um, so looking at next week's pivot, given the fact that we're sitting around the R2, the pivot's going to likely be around this 10.8 zone. Um, that being said, that's what I'd be looking at in terms of a pullback. I think it's going to be pretty weak, and, and I will look to an S2 touch before I start to think we're going to get anything deeper. Uh, for what it's worth, in a, in a longer-term view, right? if you remember, this is the July 2013 high, and, and, and from an Elliott Wave point of view, it looks like effectively we have a 1, 2, 3, 4, and now we're working on 5. So with that, all that to say, we could get a we could get a wave two here shortly, but I'm going to use the S2 touch on the weekly pivot to help confirm that, right? Because this is this is an aggressive move, uh, and, and given what's happening with the Fed relative to the other central banks, I think this could continue to move higher. All right, so uh, that was for the, the the trade investors. What we'll end with today is discussing Camarilla. 
Uh, now, I'd be happy to ask if anybody has used Camarilla pivots. Uh, they're unique, and I think when you when you learn how they can be used, uh, it's 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 a pretty neat tool for day trading. Uh, you can see there, and I've got the levels on here that they provide intraday levels of support and resistance. Right? I am always somebody who wants to trade in the direction of the trend. Um, because of that, in a downtrend, I'm looking at the R3, right? Uh, as far as Camarillas, let's go ahead and add Camarillas. Uh, we'll go ahead and add it to let's add it to dollar yen. So I'll, I'll take everything off here. And Camarillas uh, again. I'm using FXCM's Trading Station Two. Default indicator, but Camarilla is just a typical calculation mode. Uh, this is my preferred daily pivot. So weekly pivot, I just use the classic calculation. And what this is showing me is a few key things. When you hit the R4 and break above the R4, that's a breakout level. Um, uh, again, in an uptrend, I prefer to just focus on touches of the S3. The S3 is intraday support, right? So I'm just going to, again, apply historical pivots. And, and so you can see here, in an uptrend, the S3, sometimes it doesn't even get touched because the trend is so strong, which we talked about before. Uh, but the idea here, quite simply, is that it can give you clean intraday levels, right? Let's, we, naturally, we've, we've broken well past a lot of those clean levels on Aussie dollar, given the fact that it's dropped, I think, about 3% on the week. But if you don't get, and, and I'm going to go back to this slide real quick because we're coming to uh, the end of the session. If you don't get a strong candle, uh, and, and remember this, this slide, thank you. Uh, if you remember this slide, if you do not get that strong candle, that confirmation candle through the R4, right, you likely don't have an upside breakout. We could either stay flat uh, or we could reverse. And if, the, if we reverse in a downtrend, that's, that's what I want to be looking for. Um, so an R3, R4 touch in a downtrend with a reversal, i.e. A, a large candle wick, that's ideal for me in an uptrend. If you get a large candle wick to the downside against the S3 or the S4, that's ideal for me. Um, the, the textbook, if you will, the, the textbook cam signal is buying off the S3 and setting a limit at the R3 in an uptrend, or setting an entry at the R3 in a downtrend and a limit at the S3 using R4 as a stop. So this is this is just a quick calculation of what's in there. Uh, sure, we have some engineers in the crowd or some people that like to know, okay, what's, what's, what's in the soup? Um, and, and so what you'll notice is that Camarilla is really made based on mean reversion. And as you can imagine, as you can see here, um, this just gives kind of the rules for it. But the prior trend is uh, is always going to be my filter, right? Because that that to me is the path of uh, of least resistance. And in in the spirit of Mr. Newton, right? It, it's going to take a greater uh, a greater force to reverse the trend than to keep the trend going. Uh, and so that's that's what I'm going to rely on. Uh, guys, one last thing I'm going to touch on. I think we've got about a minute left is pivot range. Uh, we are running out a bit of time, but uh, I think it's helpful to note if it's something you haven't used before. Uh, it was introduced in Mark Fisher's book, The Logical Trader, a book I definitely recommend. I'm sorry for all the book recommendations. But, but effectively what it's doing is it's just giving you a range around the pivot to act as a firmer, port, firmer point of support in an uptrend, resistance in the downtrend. And a break through the range often often shows you that we, we have made a significant break. Again, I like to use them on the weekly pivots. Um, it can work well on the daily pivots as well in a strong trend. But uh, the, again, if you're an FXCM client, be more than happy to, to provide the link for you. 
uh, but this here provides the pivot range. If you remember the calculation for the pivot, high plus low plus close added up divided by three, that's the pivot calculation. The range just takes the high plus low divided by two, and then whatever that difference is between the pivot, it adds it and subtracts it around the pivot. So in a strong trend, sometimes you'll just see a move down to the pivot range, not necessarily the pivot, and, and, and that's common in those very, very strong trends. Here's just a, another quick example. Uh, and then we have a question on Camarillas that we'll, we'll definitely answer. Uh, and, and then that'll be, that'll be it for today's session. Um, so this is an older chart here, but it just, it's just a snapshot I had in my archives that, that showed an example of, okay, we are in an uptrend. We opened above the pivot, um, came down, tested the upper end of the pivot range and then popped up to the R2. Just an example there of how clean pivots can work. All right, so the question with uh, the question that we get here, and I appreciate the question, is uh, an S4 stop, how is that used? Um, and, and so very good question. I appreciate you asking. Uh, in, in looking at CAM pivots, an S4 stop would be used if you're in an uptrend. Um, so let's go to an, an uptrend if you don't mind because this is the S4, so I would use a stop if I'm buying at the S3, but again, I'd only want to buy in the S3 if net-net overall were in an uptrend. Right, so if I'm, if I'm entering here, this is just an example of the area between the S2 and the S3. If you'll notice, I actually fold in the R3 and the S3, and the, and the argument is, again, if I'm buying near that S3, I want to have the R3 as my profit target. Um, so, so hopefully that hopefully that's showing. But that's the idea. Um, and so, very good question. I appreciate that. The answer is, if I'm buying in an uptrend, that's when I want to put my stop on the S4. And again, it's a day trade. It's something that I'm not looking to hold longer term. Uh, and, and, and that's quite simply, uh, if if you are preferring to trade longer term, I, I'd recommend using these classic pivots. Um, with weekly profit targets as opposed to intraday levels. But I hope that helps with your answer on, uh, on Camarillo. All right, guys, so that's, that's, that's all I have for today. I'd be happy if you guys have any more questions to keep the room open for uh, a few more minutes and, and, and answer any questions about pivots. Again, uh, pivots are you know, near and dear to my heart for the, for the reason that they're objective. I, I think they're incredibly helpful for a lot of traders. Um, and, and because of that, that's why I wanted to spend the time explaining how I use pivots, not only for entries on day trading, uh, most commonly most commonly on swing trading. And then outside of that, um, talk, talking about the objectivity uh, and the benefit of pivots. Uh, so I'll leave the room open for a few minutes, and, and if there are no if there are no further questions, then uh, then that can be it for the day. All right, guys, and, and so with that, it looks like uh, we are we are done for the day. I do want to thank everybody that uh, that that attended. Um, uh, one one question we didn't get to um, asked: Do bigger time frame pivots have greater validity? You know, I, I tend to think that in 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 essence, uh, larger larger time frames have more validity. So that might be a bias of my own. Um, you know, I think a weekly moving average uh, is going to be a better trend indicator um, than a daily moving average or an hourly moving average. But but again, that's that's just how I trade. One one moving average, just as an example, um, is the hundred week moving average that's gotten a lot of attention from from some of the uh, investment banks and their trading desks. All, all that to say, um, I feel that the weekly pivots do just a great job, and it's good enough for me to say, uh, listen, the validity is enough for me to use. Now, obviously, the benefit with a smaller uh, time frame uh, is that you have less downside if you're wrong, but I'm always trading in the direction of the trend anyway um, and, and looking to limit that risk and have a favorable risk-reward. Um, so uh, I'll tell you, I don't think there's a way to specifically quantify that, Menage. And I'm sorry about that. But but to me, larger time larger time frame indicators, uh, by their nature, taking in more data are going to be a little bit more valid than than tighter time frames. 
So, guys, that's going to be it for today. Again, I, I do appreciate your time. Uh, let me just make sure everybody has my, my contact information once again. Sorry, I have to scroll back to find it. Uh, so if you want to email me questions or, or reach out to me on Twitter, you're always absolutely welcome to. I uh, hope everybody here has an excellent weekend, and we will see you at the next presentation. Thank you to everybody at FX Street, and have a great day.